folks, Species 7 here. How's everybody doing? We're here in Professional Farmer 2014, and uh, I am about halfway through year two in the campaign or tutorial mode. This is my new uh, little Flegel bale trailer. And uh, these are my new Flegel bales. <laughs> um, kind of an odd thing. In year one, remember, we did baling. And uh, then they said, okay, take your gear back to the farm. And kind of figured they were going to go, all right, next step, of course, is to pick up your bales. And it's a near miss. But uh, that didn't happen. They skipped ahead till the next time that we could uh, take crops down. So, kind of odd. Well, in the uh, second year, what's happened is the first thing that goes, of course, is they advance time once more. And then they come up and tell you your mission is to cultivate three fields. So you own two fields, so you do have to buy a third one. Um, a word of advice, be sharp about it. Buy a field that already has a crop on it. They're about the same price, and it saves you an entire plowing, cultivating, sowing, etc. Um, all of the expenses therein too. So uh, this is a new piece of gear too. This is me little front end loader. It is a, uh, I don't know, never heard of it before. It does have some kind of strange number or name. There we go. It is a V2Q Monte Cola. Yeah, Pepsi's got nothing on this guy. All right, I said copyrightable word oops and uh, yeah works much like you'd expect a front-end loader although the bar that you see between here and the actual knuckle of the loader is rigid and merely compresses um, in other words it's not a powered hydraulic cylinder okay you can't control the roll on this knuckle as you raise the bar up basically it's designed so that whatever level the main leg is at these prongs are going to be exactly parallel to the ground right so but anyway it does work well it does pick up bales it does put them on the trailer there is one issue um, and that is that for some reason uh, at least with a tractor there's about a three foot wall all the way around the trailer both sides front and back um, which means that with the length of these little itsy bitsy forks on here and you can see there's not much to these I hope you can actually see that I don't think I can crouch um, you basically have to set your bales so that they're you know one half of the trailer and then the other half lengthwise because if a bale gets into the center of the trailer where it's past at least 80 percent you know so you can't get at least 80 percent of your spike into it you won't get it off the trailer i actually uh the three bales up there two of them came off with the uh that guy the other one was in the center it was out of reach from everywhere around the trailer if i'd have been able to actually come up and put the front tires against the trailer i could have gotten it easily but because again you've got doesn't matter how high those are nothing all right doesn't matter if you you know try and back up to the trailer you can get about this close and that's it so um i actually had to uh long story short drive the trailer around in circles till the bale fell off <laughs> and then drop off the trailer and pick up the bale and haul it over there because they never told us, it doesn't actually say what you do with the bales. Now, I'm storing them there. I assume I can sell them at the same place I sell grains, but we'll see how that goes. Um, the other thing I wanted to kind of do was to go to vehicles here. And let's go to that guy. He, he's at the shop. So, I thought, uh, while we were here, I would, uh, this is kind of, by the way, this is sort of a final thoughts thing on the campaign for the game, so, um, but I thought while we were here, 
doing this, I'd uh, drop a vehicle here. This is the same Linda tractor we started with. So that I could show you once you actually get into the game proper um, and drop all the first year restrictions, what kind of gear they're supplying. And as I said, I sort of wanted to give an overall of my game. It is a gorgeous game to look at. It runs really smoothly, at least on my computer, I have heard. Ooh, there wasn't a solid wall there. There is here, though. Are those cardboard? <laughs> oh, no. I thought I could go in. Darn. It's just clearer glass, that's all. Buggers. But, uh, well, that's a real one. Hm. Um, it's a beautiful game. It seems to run fairly smoothly. As I said, I've heard of complaints from people about it being laggy, etc. I've had a couple of little lags. But beyond that, no. It seems to run reasonably well. Um, the machinery is nice. It's modeled well. It drives well. Um, the effects on the fields are decent enough. Um, you know, so the game mechanics itself are pretty good. Animal management. Um, I'm hoping at some point they release a patch that puts the rest of it in. At this point, all you can do is come here to the store and buy animals, and then um, ducks, cows, chickens, and then every time you roll a season over, you can read off the numbers as to what those particular animals made you. So, hmm. Now, I have not yet hired a worker, but from what I have read on a couple of different forums, um, apparently it's kind of like the animals, you know? You hire a worker, you click on the field you want them to deal with, you click on the job you want them to deal with, you click go, and then the job is done. So, yeah, there's not really any worker management, as it were. Which kind of leaves us with what this game exactly is or does. Well, in my honest opinion, or, well, I'm sorry, in my humble opinion, okay? It is my honest opinion. I have no reason to lie to you guys. But what I'm kind of seeing it as is sort of, you know, UIG's redemption. You know, we can deliver a smooth, bug-free product. Alright, the content may not quite be what you're expecting, but maybe we'll release DLC, I don't know. Um, but that's almost what it feels like, you know? They have a new, um, a new publisher out there now. They've got uh, Playway instead of uh, uh, Actologic. And... Uh, this is their first really playable, runs well, I've got however many hours into it now. Um, but yeah, it somehow seems quite incomplete. You know, there, there's such a manual, you know, thing from everything from how you drive the tractor to the jobs you do on the fields are all very, um, you know, user intensive. And yet, as I say, the whole animal husbandry thing, um, the worker hiring, that's like, okay, here's the basic skeleton for it, and that'll allow us to build something later. Because beyond that, no, those are not finished aspects in this game. So, um, I do plan to finish out the career mode, tutorial mode, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, if anything odd, amazing, or different comes up, I will certainly let you guys in on it. And other than that, um, when I finish that, I'm going to give the free play mode a chance just to see, like, you know, what sort of gear they start you with, how much money, how many fields, um, that sort of thing. And then uh, we'll see where it goes from there. As I say, I would not be surprised at all if, uh, since this is, after all, a 2014 game, and if that's all there is to it, everybody's going to be finished it before 2013 finishes. So uh, I get a feeling there may be indeed a bunch of either patches and or DLCs. And with the amount they lost on their last few games, I'm thinking DLCs. But that should improve this game somewhat. Well, that's a bit glitchy, isn't it?
Well, you know, I guess that's supposed to be that way. I just assumed those were solid panels because they were black. Maybe it isn't. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah, it's just a glitch. <laughs> but anyway, um, so there you go. I enjoyed playing the game. Um, it leaves you wanting more, which is not a bad thing, but not more of the same. And right now, that's what it's offering, is more of the same. Um, I can drive up and down fields in Farming Simulator and still be bothered with other things, you know. Um, even the mods with the, the pig mod having been added and the uh, beef and pig fattening stations and, you know, the, yeah, they've still got it over this guy. Um, and of course, yeah, the modding scene. This is never going to have the modding scene, so... As I say, I am going to continue to play it. I'm going to keep a really close eye out for patches. And to end our video, and to sort of end my final thoughts on the career mode of this game, I thought we'd just uh, let you guys have a look. That's not what I wanted to have a look at, actually. Um, oh, there we go. Objectives. Yeah, see? This is what they gave me after. That was the last thing you saw. Is we, you can drive home. You take that off, right? And then, uh, yeah, when you start again, they get you to cultivate, and then they want you to harvest three fields as your last objective. I just harvested my first one, so. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, as I said, to end this, let's have a look at what they do offer for vehicles once you're into the game proper. Okay, we got a couple of uh, massive, gee, don't know who that would be, <laughs> tractors, uh, 180, 155 horse, respectively. Um, this is the little front loader I got, it's uh, 130 horse, they also have a little... Uh, friend model goes with your uh, baler although i kind of like the spike on it better at uh, 120 horse then we have this tractor here that looks a lot like a kind of like the deutz at a simulator but not we got this big 280 horse friend that's a monster not bad forty thousand bucks eh wow Oh, I'm sorry. I <laughs> moved the mouse down. 125000 Okay, that makes more sense. Still, a um, lot less money than what uh, the competitors are charging you, right? And here we get into the Lidners. Not bad. I think this is the one they start you with. So 180 horse right off the bat. I mean, other than this monster, that's one of the more powerful. Ooh, this is a 360 horse Lidner. And then there's the John Deere that came on the property. Um, these guys were a DLC package that was available. Um, I got it off of Steam for, I think, like $2. But if you bought the Deluxe Edition, you got these seven old-timey sort of tractors, seven or eight, there's a few of them. And then um, you also got Farming Giant. And if you got it through Steam, you got the gold version, which included some extras. So, And then they have combines, like this guy here, and then these 75 headers that are available to strap on the... Yeah, they left, like, right from, you know, little 7-foot headers right up to 12.2 meter type headers. The same thing, three or four corn headers for each of them. And then we've got, I guess these are about the same in spec... All right, bunch more headers, more combines, more headers. Then we have grain trailers, crampes. So they did, uh, they did get a couple of licenses because we got Lidner, we got Crampe, we got uh, Flagel trailers here, Lemkin plows, uh, Horse Toronto uh, cultivators. These are all names we're familiar with. Those of us that play FS two thirteen, of course. Uh, Roush sprayers, that's a different one, Amazon cedars, and then Flygel bale trailers. So that's their selection. I just thought that, uh, and of course if I wanted to, I could uh, sell my Geotrack for 30000 and buy a new one for uh, <laughs> way more than that, let's just say. 
So there you go, guys. That's kind of my final thoughts on the game. Is it worth it? It definitely is. Um, if you're looking something to break FS 2013 up for a while until some new mods are out for you or new maps or whatever, definitely worth the effort. I think it's actually 30% off right now on Steam. They're having their Christmas sale type thing. So um, I think that'll cover it for this look at the uh, the game. I will come back, as I said, do a couple of videos up on the actual free play mode. And of course, any DLC that comes along for it, I will gladly show you because I am going to play this. So, until then, take care of each other, folks. This has been Species 7 for Professional Farmer 2014. Have a wonderful day. Ciao for now.